and welcome to my WTF is Cascade Modules project. Uh, today I'm going to explain uh, the initial velocity, and not much. Is, it's not that hard to understand. So let's just go at it. I'm going to change the distribution to constant for now, and my let's change the initial velocity on the z-axis to 100. Now all the Im particles that are being emitted will have an inst instant standard velocity of 100 upwards on the z-axis. Uh, if I also add 100 to the x-axis, it will also move to the left. There we go. And yeah, that explains most of it already. Now let's go back to the distribution factor uniform. And uh, let's say I want it to move uh, 50 to the left and 50 upwards there. Now, because it's the factor uniform, it will um, move on the x-axis between uh, 50 and 0. So some of them won't move to the left and some will move all the way to the left, 50. And then there's the z-axis. Some of them won't move upwards at all and others will move all the way up. And yeah, that explains all there is that you need to know, but there are a few other things I could explain. There's the start velocity radial, and again, that's something I don't see used a lot. Well, it's actually a quite an interesting part of the initial velocity module. For that, you actually do need an initial location module, and I explained that in the previous video, so that won't be something weird for you. It, the, in this case, the initial location module needs to be above the initial velocity module, and that's because uh, when Cascade is rendering, it first goes to the required, then spawn, then the lifetime, then initial size, and then anything in that order. So for this to work, let's change the initial velocity back to something simple, and also put the z max to 100 and the z minimum to 50. There. Some are moving upwards in the speed of 100, some are moving in the speed of 50. That's okay. Now let's do something in initial location. Um, let's say I do 50 the plus for each and minus 50 for the others besides the z, which will be 0. Now I'll go to initial velocity and there's the start velocity radial. And I can actually use a constant first. Let's add 50 to it. Now, depending on how far this particle is away from 0, 0, 0, additional velocity will be applied. So, if I do this 1000, then as you can see, it's moving away in the angle that it's normally going with initial velocity. Uh, so, to explain this a little bit better, and actually, let's spawn only one particle for a while. And let's make sure that it's always on the same location. So I'm going to use a constant of 50 and Z50. And to make it even more clear, I'm actually going to move the initial velocity first. So this particle always gets spawned at 50x and 50z. It's always there. Now with the start velocity radial, if I actually up that, it looks at the distance between where it's emitted and the 0, 0, 0 location on the x, y, and z axis. And depending on that distance, it will apply additional velocity and outwards. So to explain that a bit better, let me get a print screen and open Photoshop there. And while I'm waiting, I'm just going to add some more velocity to it, just because why not? Okay. There you go. So what it basically it's doing is it gets, it looks at this from that point to that point, and then move the whole particle that way. So that's what the start velocity radial does. It's kind of ignores the start velocity, but it does add some additional variation, of course. 
So if another particle would be emitted here, let me get another color for that. There. So if this particle gets emitted all the way over here, there, a nice pink particle, then it will take this point in local space and then looks at the particle location and moves it further that way. That's basically the best way to explain this. Let's move it a bit lower again and actually give it initial location a uh, factor uniform again. So a plus 50 on the x-axis and a minus 50 on the x-axis. As you can see, they're moving away from the center. And if there's a little bit of Z variation there, it also uses that information not to move away. So this is actually two modules working together. The initial velocity is actually basically asking the initial location from yo particle, where are you spawned? So I can apply the initial velocity from an angle. And the initial location tells it, and then you get this result. You can also change this to float uniform or any other thing. So let's do float uniform now. And let's say the minimum distribution is minus 50 and the max is 50. Then some of the particles are actually moving back towards the center, as you can see. Yes, that explains most of the velocity radio. The thing is, and the float uniform actually does work, but the constant curve doesn't have any effect on this. I'm not sure why. Um, the distribution flow part parameter might actually influence that better, but that's for some for another day. So yeah, when you're using an initial velocity, keep in mind that besides the start velocity, you can also use the start velocity radio to combine with initial location or other location-based nodes and modules. Uh, I hope you'll learn something from this and take care. Bye bye.